The fakest scam in the entire oil additive world hides behind one word. Nano. These bottles claim to use microscopic metal particles to coat your engine, reverse wear, and give you space age protection. Sounds impressive, right? But here's the truth. Most of these so-called nanotech additives are nothing more than thick oil mixed with metallic sludge. They don't repair anything, they don't reduce friction, and in real engines, they cause total chaos. I've seen turbochargers fail in just weeks because filters got clogged with this metallic gunk. Customers thought they were protecting their engines, but what they really did was choke off the lifeblood of the motor oil flow. And the worst part, none of these companies show real testing, no API certification, no SA papers, not even one shred of data, just flashy packaging with words like nano armor or metal bonding designed to trick people who don't know better. Now to be fair, there's one exception, Triboti X. This product actually came out of NASA and Department of Energy Research, and it uses engineered ceramic particles that bond to metal under heat. It's expensive, but it's real. Everything else on the shelf, junk science wrapped in shiny marketing. If it sounds like a miracle out of a comic book, that's exactly where it belongs. Not in your crankcase. But nanotech scams are just the beginning, because the next additive doesn't just waste your money, it pretends to fix leaks while secretly tearing your engine apart from the inside. If you've ever spotted a little oil drip in your driveway, you've probably seen the quick fix bottles promising to seal leaks instantly. They sound tempting, why spend hundreds on a real repair when a $15 bottle claims to do the job? But here's the ugly truth, stop leak additives are like putting bubble gum inside your engine. Sure, it might slow the drip for a while, but the damage they create is far worse than the leak you started with. These products work by using harsh chemicals that swell and soften rubber seals. At first, it looks like a miracle. The drip slows down, maybe even stops. But over time, that swollen rubber breaks down, cracks, or turns into mush. I've seen rear main seals completely shredded within a few thousand miles miles after someone tried to fix it with a stop leak additive. What started as a few drops of oil on the driveway ended in a full engine rebuild. And it doesn't stop with the seals. That chemical soup circulates through your entire oil system, clogging filters, lifters, and tiny oil passages. One customer dumped stop leak into his crankcase to fix a valve cover leak. Two months later, his oil pressure was gone. The top end of the motor was ticking like crazy, and the engine was starving itself. That $15 shortcut cost him thousands. The lesson is simple. If your engine is leaking, fix the seal. Don't poison your oil with chemicals that destroy rubber and strangle your motor. Because once your engine is chewing on swollen seals and blocked oil passages, there's no bottle on a shelf that will save it. And if you think stop leak sounds bad, just wait. The next additive doesn't even pretend to fix anything. It's pure science fiction nonsense dressed up in shiny packaging. This one almost makes me laugh, because it's not just a scam, it's a complete insult to basic science. Some companies actually claim their oil additives are magnetic. Supposedly, these magnetic particles cling to engine parts, aligning oil molecules for better protection. Sounds futuristic, right? Except for one tiny problem, motor oil isn't magnetic, and steel engine parts don't suddenly act like magnets just because you poured in a bottle of overpriced snake oil. I had a customer proudly bring me one of these so-called magnetic additives. The label bragged about creating a magnetic field inside the engine to bond the oil to metal surfaces. I almost laughed on the spot. The reality? It was nothing but thick oil loaded with mystery particles that did absolutely nothing, except clog the oil filter and mess with flow. These bottles are marketing scams, plain and simple. They slap on a flashy label, toss around words like molecular bonding or magnetic attraction, and trick people into thinking they're buying advanced technology. But there's no SAE testing, no OEM approval, no real chemistry backing it up, just clever packaging and a load of nonsense. Here's the bottom line. Your engine doesn't need magic tricks. It needs proven lubrication chemistry. If a product claims it works with magnetic forces, toss it in the trash. Because the only thing magnetic about these additives is how they attract your money out of your wallet. And while magnetic scams are laughable, the next additive is no joke. In fact, it's a product that actually can help in small amounts. But the second you overdo it, it turns your engine into a sludge-filled nightmare. On paper, molybdenum disulfide, or MOS2, sounds like a lifesaver. 
flavor. It's a solid anti-wear additive that really does reduce friction when it's blended correctly into high quality oils. In fact, in the right dose from a trusted brand, it works beautifully. But here's where people wreck their engines. They think if a little is good, then a lot must be better. And that mistake turns MOS2 from a protector into a killer. I've seen it firsthand. A customer poured not one, but two bottles of cheap moly additive into his older BMW, thinking he was giving it extra protection. Within just 300 miles, his oil pressure tanked. When we dropped the pan, what came out wasn't oil. It was sludge-like black paste. The filter was jammed solid and the engine was starving for lubrication. That wasn't wear and tear. That was an overdose disaster. The truth is, modern engines are designed with incredibly tight tolerances and fine oil passages. They aren't built to circulate powdered metal. High-end brands know how to mill and suspend MOS too correctly so it stays stable in oil. But the knockoff bottles and DIY moly boosters? They just clump, settle, and suffocate your motor. So here's the reality. A little MOS2 from a trusted name like Liqui Moly can help, but double dosing or using bargain bin knockoffs is like feeding your engine wet cement. One mistake, and you've turned a friction fighter into a sludge factory. And if you think that's bad, wait until you see the next scam, because at least with MOS2, you know what you're dealing with. The next category, they won't even tell you what's inside the bottle. Imagine buying food at the grocery store where the label doesn't list a single ingredient. Would you eat it? Probably not. Yet people pour mystery oil conditioners into their engines every single day without asking what's inside. And here's the truth. If a company refuses to tell you what's in the bottle, it's not because they're protecting some secret formula. It's because you wouldn't like the answer. These so-called oil conditioners are some of the sketchiest products on the shelf. No data sheets, no API certification, no real lab testing, just vague claims claims like improves lubrication or restores performance. Sounds nice, but in reality, you're buying a cocktail of chemical junk thickeners, dyes, fillers. Nothing engineered to actually protect your engine. I once tore down a Dodge Ram that had been running on one of these mystery mixes. The owner thought he was upgrading his oil. Instead, his oil pressure dropped, his camshaft was scored, and when we pulled the pan, the oil had turned into sticky molasses. Whatever was in that bottle didn't condition the engine. It strangled it. Here's the rule. Real products don't hide. If an additive is legitimate, you'll see the ingredients, the lab testing, and usually an OEM or API approval backing it. If all you see is slick marketing and words like proprietary blend, that's just code for we're not telling you because you wouldn't pour it in your car if you knew. And while secret formulas are bad enough, the next scam is even more dangerous. Because these bottles don't just lie about what's inside. They promise to restore life to a dying engine, when really, they're selling nothing but false hope. If a bottle claims it can restore compression, seal your rings, or bring back lost horsepower without ever picking up a wrench, you're staring at snake oil. These so-called engine restorers prey on desperation. They promise to revive tired engines with just one pour, but what's really inside Inside, usually thick oil loaded with fillers or soft metals like copper or tin and instead of fixing anything they just create a temporary illusion here's how they work the gunk seals tiny gaps for a short time making it seem like compression improved or a knock went away but it's like putting sawdust in a transmission it doesn't fix the problem it covers it up i once saw a honda owner dump one of these bottles into his tired engine before a road trip by mile 300, the motor seized solid. The culprit, the restorer, clogged his oil filter, starved the head, and turned a small issue into total engine death. The hard truth is this, no bottle on a shelf can rebuild worn rings, fix leaky valves, or repair scored cylinder walls. That takes tools, parts, and real work, not magic sludge. Snake oil restorers sell hope, not solutions, and the only thing they restore is your mechanic's bank account when you roll in with a destroyed engine. But the scams don't stop there, because the next additive on this list takes something that sounds slick and literally chokes your engine to death. Graphite sounds smart on on paper. It's slick, it's used in pencils, and it's known for reducing friction. So the idea of coating engine parts with a graphite film might sound clever, but here's the truth. Pouring graphite into your crankcase is like dumping pencil shavings into your motor. It doesn't stay suspended in oil, it clumps, and it turns into gritty sludge that your engine simply can't handle. I tore down a small block Ford that had been running one of these graphite additives for just six months. What we found was shocking. The oil pan coated in thick black paste 
increased. Oil passages half blocked and lifters starving for lubrication. The owner thought he was upgrading his oil, but what he really did was suffocate his motor with a sludge bomb. And here's the kicker. Once graphite cakes onto hot parts, it doesn't shed heat. It traps it. That means instead of cooling your engine, it's cooking it from the inside. Modern engines already run hot and tight. The last thing they need is a solid contaminant settling in places where only liquid oil should be flowing freely. Graphite might work for locks, pencils, or dry lubrication, but in today's engines, it's a guaranteed recipe for clogged filters, starved bearings, and overheated parts. If you want smooth performance, keep the pencil lead out of your crankcase. But while graphite slowly chokes your motor, the next scam is even more aggressive, because this one doesn't just settle, it strips your oil bare like paint thinner, and leaves your engine knocking for mercy. This one's a classic trap. Bottles that promise to flush sludge and de deep clean your engine sound like maintenance magic, but what they don't tell you is that most of these additives are loaded with harsh solvents, things like kerosene, naphtha, or mineral spirits, and pouring them into your crankcase is like dumping paint thinner into your oil. Sure, they'll dissolve sludge and varnish fast, but at a brutal cost, these solvents thin your oil down until it loses the protective film your bearings rely on. Once that cushion is gone, metal grinds on metal and your engine starts eating itself alive. I had a customer customer try one of these flushes right before an oil change. By the time he got home, the motor was knocking like a jackhammer. And if you got a turbo, forget it. Solvent thinned oil overheats and fails so badly that turbo seals don't stand a chance. That's not cleaning your engine. That's a fast track to catastrophic failure. Here's the truth. Sludge isn't the enemy if you're changing oil on time. Trying to wash it all out instantly with harsh chemicals is like blasting a hundred year old barn with a pressure washer. It won't come out clean, it'll collapse. If your additive smells like lighter fluid, it has no business in your crankcase. But thinning your oil isn't the only way Way to wreck an engine because the next scam takes something that used to be good and turns it into a modern day engine killer. Back in the muscle car era, zinc was king. ZDDP, zinc dial kildathiophosphate, was the magic ingredient that protected flat tappet cams and lifters and engines from the 60s and 70s. For those old school motors, ZDDP was a lifesaver. But here's where people go wrong, dumping zinc boosters into modern engines. More zinc doesn't mean more protection, it means more destruction. Modern oils already have carefully balanced levels of ZDDP, add too much, and it burns off, coating your O2 sensors and catalytic converters with a toxic film. I've seen it happen. A guy added two bottles of high zinc additive to his 2014 F-150, thinking he was helping. Less than 2,000 miles later, his catalytic converter was toast. That mistake cost him $1,200, all because he thought more was better. Here's the truth, today's engines don't need extra zinc. In fact, it kills emission systems, tanks mileage, and lights up check engine codes. What worked for a 69 Camaro will destroy a 2019 daily driver. So if you think you're outsmarting the engineers by spiking your oil with zinc, think again. You're not adding protection, you're signing up for expensive repairs. And if you thought too much zinc was bad, the next additive is even worse, because instead of coating parts, it actually melts your engine from the inside out. Want to melt your engine from the inside out? Just add chlorinated paraffins. These additives often show up in bottles bragging about extreme pressure or high load protection. On the surface, it sounds like they're giving your motor extra armor. But here's the dark truth. When chlorinated paraffins get hot, they break down into hydrochloric acid. Yes, the same acid used to eat rust off metal. Now imagine that running through your bearings, cam journals, and cylinder walls. I had a customer pour a bottle of this stuff into an old Chevy 350. Two oil changes later, the evidence was clear. Pitted main bearings, etched cam lobes, and oil that smelled burnt and metallic. That wasn't wear. That was chemical corrosion eating the engine alive from the inside. Automakers know the danger. That's why OEMs flat out ban chlorinated paraffins in approved oil formulas. They're toxic to engines, poisonous to the environment, and completely unnecessary when modern oils are engineered to handle pressure properly. So here's the reality. If an oil additive sounds like something you'd find in a chemistry lab, it probably belongs there, not in your crankcase.
And while chlorinated paraffins can dissolve an engine in slow motion, the next additive on this list is the original scam, one of the oldest tricks still being sold under shiny new labels. This one's the OG scam of the oil additive world. PTFE, better known as Teflon, is the same stuff used to coat nonstick frying pans. And decades ago, companies decided to sell it as a miracle oil treatment. The pitch? Reduced friction, smoother engines, longer life. The reality, pouring PTFE into your crankcase is like dumping melted plastic into your motor. Here's the problem, Teflon doesn't dissolve in oil, it clumps, it settles, and it gums up everything it touches. I've torn down engines filled with white sludge, scored bearings, lifters starved for oil, and filters clogged solid with PTFE clumps. And get this, even DuPont, the company that makes Teflon, told oil additive companies to stop using it back in the 1990s. When the inventor of the chemical says, don't put it in engines, that should tell you something. Modern motors make the problem even worse. With tiny oil galleries and high pressure systems, they can't tolerate junk floating around in the oil. PTFE might make things sound quieter at first, but over time, it strangles oil flow and slowly kills the engine from the inside out. And yet, decades later, the scam lives on. Slick 50 may have been hit with lawsuits and bans, but today the same Teflon-loaded junk is still being rebranded and sold under different names. New label, same engine killing sludge. So if you see PTFE anywhere on a bottle, do yourself a favor, put it back on the shelf. Because Teflon belongs in your frying pan, not your crankcase. Now, after tearing through the 11 worst scams in the oil additive industry, let's flip the script, because not not every bottle is trash, a handful of products actually do earn their spot in a mechanic's garage, and these next five, they're the only ones worth trusting. Not all additives are scams, and Liqui Moly's MOS2 is proof. This one isn't some overnight miracle or mystery sludge, it's a German engineered formula that's been around for decades, backed by real testing and OEM approval in Europe. And unlike the cheap knockoff Moly products that clog engines, Liqui Moly's MOS2 is milled ultra fine so it stays suspended in oil instead of settling into sludge. I've personally run this in high mileage imports, old trucks, and even tired work vans. The results? Smoother cold starts, quieter idle, and lower oil temps on long drives. It doesn't overload the engine with solids, it doesn't thicken the oil, and it actually bonds to metal surfaces where protection is needed most. The difference comes down to balance. Liqui Moly figured out how to use MOS2 in just the right amount and the result is consistent, proven protection. If you're running an older or high mileage engine and want to stretch its life, this is one additive that truly earns its keep. And while Liqui Moly is a solid choice for everyday engines, the next product is a lifesaver for anyone running a diesel, especially those plagued by one of the most expensive problems a power stroke can face. If you own a Power Stroke diesel, especially a 6.0 liter or 7.3 liter, you've probably heard the horror stories about injector stiction, cold starts that sound like a tractor, rough idle that shakes the truck. 